What's going on, Facebook? Coach Garrison here with another episode of First and Ten. And we are working on the series of teamwork. Okay, we're working on the extreme version of teamwork. Here's what I found. And we are accepting, or I'm extending the invitation to uh, those that listen to be under extreme situations because we're not talking about regular teamwork here. Today we're about to uh, talk about some of the negative aspects of team of people in your life. Um, we're going to talk about some of the aspects that you are um, projecting that could very well be negative. So without further delay, I want to go ahead and get started. Um, let's do this. All right, Coach Garrison here. We're talking about teamwork today. Again, this is the third show on teamwork. And uh, this is a very difficult subject. This is a very um, interesting subject. I have some great and high expectations for my starters. Those of you guys who are out there who are probably pros at teamwork, at communication, you might sit down just for a moment to see you know, if you can gather something from this uh, coaching session. Uh, those of you who think you know what teamwork is, then just spend a few moments with me and check yourself uh, to see if these people are on your team and how well are you coaching. Um, coach Garrison here, I'm a certified life coach. That's about as far as I go. Other than that, uh, it's about me and you. So take a seat, open your ears, open your eyes. Um, we're talking about teamwork. Do you have a defiant person on your team? Okay. Do you have a de devious person on your team? Do you have a strategic person on your team? Do you have a motivator on your team? Do you have a weak link on your team? What obligations do you have for yourself and your team, meaning your family, a team synonymous with your organization, synonymous with your city, synonymous with, synonymous, I'm making up words already, synonymous with groups of people that are involved in your life? How are you touching each and every one of them? What is your obligations? What is your expectations, your experience? And how do you communicate with your team? Today, we're going to talk about in the team aspect of how to solve a problem, how to resolve a conflict. Okay, this is not your ordinary conflict resolution here. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you start to solve a problem on your team, your family, your no matter how scattered you are, one in, in California, another over here, or there's been a death in the family, and you're working on a lot of issues, insurance, and, and you're working on family issues, you have a blended family, and you're working on relationships in the family, you're working on uh, business aspects of the family, and you, you just, you, or you don't have a unity in your family, how do you solve a problem? Well, first of all, one of the aspects of a coach's life is bringing a team together and, 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 and putting them all in the locker room mentality. Well, you can open people's minds and you can say what you need to say and sometimes in very, very hostile ways, a loud voice or being able to, to say, shut up, this is what I expect of you. We're going to get out there and we're going to play. How do you get your team together so you can say, I'm tired of losing, I'm tired of being broke, I'm, I'm tired of being faithless, I'm tired of being hopeless, I'm tired of this aspect of my life and this aspect of your life. How do you bring your team together to do that? How does this happen? Do you offend people and do it? How do you get in that mindset? where they will look at you and listen to you while you're in that situation? How do you bring your family? How do you bring your spouse into that situation where they don't feel like you're stepping on them and, 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 and speaking down into their souls to discourage them? 
when you're not satisfied with where your team is? How do you do that when you've been married so long and you don't feel like you've gotten anywhere? You're still in the same position that you was 10 years ago and your dreams are not coming true. How do you pull a team together and get that in order? So we're going to talk about how to solve that problem. The first thing we're going to do is it's going to sound like sort of a punk mode is you got to get your ears right so you can listen. What do I, what do I mean? Before you walk into that locker room, you say, all right, everybody, sit down. You're going to have to prepare to deal with the objectives that come with you right away. You're going to walk in the room and say, all right, sit down. I got to everybody look at me right now. First of all, if you ain't used to having that tone of voice and it's, it's all whack and it's all it's non-confident, non-authoritative uh, in your right, rightful position, then you already messed up to start with. So don't raise your voice if you, you know, you're not ready for that feedback that you're going to get. That's why I'm saying open your ears so you can hear the elements that come back when you're starting to move yourself in that position, remember, you're tired, you're burnt out, you're frustrated, and you, you've been reclusive, and you've been sitting in the back room, you're coming home every night, you ain't socializing with nobody, you're going in straight into the room, shutting the door, and you're not telling nobody how you feel. So it's culminating all that energy inside, and you got to get it out. So how do we bring this, this locker room session to your team at work? Whatever the case may be, how do you have an extra meeting when you're supposed to just meet once a month? You see, how do you call things to order when you know the higher ups, the administration is running the show and the things that they're doing is causing the dis your team to be dysfunctional? So how do you bring that team that you're accountable for and the sales force together and you get your ideology out there and as how to correct the issues and what's going on? How do you do this? unscheduled meeting when you know people aren't willing first get your ears right to hear the feedback when you call the order when you call the meeting the order someone said what you want you're gonna have to just look by certain things no i just need you to sit down with me i'm feeling some things and they've become reality and we're di we're a disaster we're losing and this is why i think we're losing but before I share with you any more about why I think we're losing, I want to hear your aspects of why you're losing. So now you're opening the conversation and you're going to hear everybody's side that you can. OK, that's that is if you know, if you don't have you don't play the piano and you know the notes to play. You're, you're a beginner, you're a novice and you call a call of a COA, a call of action. Everybody sit down right now. Then you're going to have to listen from a position of strength to be in a position of strength. Well, I don't think we ought to be doing this and we shouldn't have been doing this and we shouldn't have been doing that. And you just listen. OK, you next. What do you think we're doing wrong? Well, I didn't get enough playing time and I don't think this, that and the other, blah, blah, blah. OK, thank you. Now, you can't reinstate what they said so you, they can make, you can make sure that they you know you heard them, okay? But I need you in this position. I need you in, you see my eyes? I need you not blanked out and all discombobulated. I need you to demonstrate that you are at the bottom and you want to be at the top and that you are not accepting anything except once we determine I know I got to speed up six minutes ago. Once we determine what the issues are on the table, if you got to write them on a whiteboard, once we determine, okay, this family has lost its spiritual direction. We have, we, we're not going to church. We're not praying. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. Whatever this, or we're not getting to work on time. Or we're not, we're not uh, cleaning up after work. We're, we're not making up beds. We're not doing all the things that indicate that we're proud of what we're doing and the way we live it. So once you summarize that, it might take you 24 hours to summarize that. Don't be picking at people. Don't be criticizing people. You want to identify with people, with their strengths and their weaknesses, because you have them too. So you will be putting yours on the table. What am I strong at? What am I weak at? 
Okay? Am I a motivator? Am I a discourager? Am I strategic enough? Am I devious or, or am I defiant? Am I not listening to the team? You got to open yourself up. This is a battle here. This is a war. This is a zone. And you ain't leaving this locker room. You ain't leaving this house until you understand how this family is going to be founded and is going to create a legacy and is going to go into the future, young 16-year-old little person that's rebellious. <laughs> Not all 16-year-olds are rebellious, okay? But this is the way it's going to be, and this is the way we're going to approach it with unity. Okay, we're going to take some hits, but we've taken too much. One thing I've learned from being the age that I am, I know I look young, is that I should have stopped some things years ago. I should have stopped them. No, not considered stopping them. No, not just swaying the ship slowly, turning it over five years. No, it should have just stopped right then. Certain things went on 10 years. Stop them now. They're too expensive to waste the relationships, the time, the quality time that you need as far as husband and wife or the boss relationship. The, you don't need to be switching jobs that often unless you're destined to be independent. And if that's your calling, I can understand that. I'm really independent now, okay? <laughs> oh, that's funny. You'll figure out what I just said. I'm really independent. I do terrible on the nine to five job. Why? Because I, I work most of the people that I'm working with on the nine to five job. I don't know when to quit. I just mess things up. Don't that do ever stop? I, <laughs> Some people can't wait till the, the whistle blows so they can get out of there. Me, I'm still working, messing up everything. So look, I'm making the whole team look bad because everybody done left and, you know. Who are you? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Tonight's elements of solving a problem is getting on top of the problem, understanding, comprehending what the problem is. That's what your, your objective is. But you cannot solve it if you don't know what it is. And, and, and as a matter of fact, I hope I transferred the attitude it wasn't, it is not going to be a meanness. It's not going to be a, a, I'm better than you guys, so you ought to be just like me. If you do that, shame on you. Because I'm going to sit back and watch you, and I'm going to get you. Because you can be weak as I don't know what. You, you, you are human just like I am. Let me sit back and watch. I'm going to catch you right on in the trap. Talking about you this and you that. No, you, you get got. You'll get got good. Okay, so don't come arrogantly. Bring your team together with an authority of we can do this. We're going to make this. We're going to stop this because Coach Garrison says so. Now, we're working on these shows now. You don't have to be loud and boisterous. You just might be silent thunder. Somebody look at you sideways and say, Dad, I don't agree with what you're saying. You just look. Okay, talk to me. You've been on this earth three years, five years, seven years, 12 years. But talk to me. I want to hear what you got to say. You know more about technology than the rest of us do, but you ain't been here but a few minutes. So anyways, interview them tactfully, but hear them out. And you better know what each person on that team is their strengths and weaknesses and their objectives. You better know what they are because you have plenty more problems that you're going to have to resolve along the way but the attitude and understanding what the problem is and understanding the team members the defiance you got to speak to them different the the devious people you got to speak to them di different the strategic people they don't want to hear you doing all this shouting and hollering they just want you don't have to holler just tell them what the problem is and i'll research how to fix it they're bookworms. They're not all the exciting kind of people. They don't need pictures and bells and whistles. They just need it written out, plain and simple, your request for their input. If they're strategic. They're like intellectual beings. You don't need to get all and spit all up in their face. But then our, our red people, which are hyper people, yeah, you might have to tell, sit down. 
running everywhere, messing up stuff. I need your full attention. So the hyper people, you know, those have to be worked with different. Okay? And then some of you people that's devious are going to challenge you to see what you know. Do your research. Get your game right. Okay? And be ready from the coach's position to unify your team. The call of action has got to be done. You better do it tomorrow. This is life or death situation. Some people need to get out and get jobs. Some people need to become independent. Stop messing around. Create a product. Write a book. All these things. Make a true investment. All these things need to be done. Go in the call. Follow their call of ministry. They need to go apply for another job because they're wasting their talent. Let's get it right. This is Coach Garrison in first and ten, and I'm expecting a difference in your life tomorrow, starting tonight. Whoa!